up my fellow creators. So today I just wanted to talk about the A7R5 for portrait photography. After shooting with this camera for like three to four months, I can say that it's probably my favorite camera for photography that I've ever used. Um, not because there's anything super special about it. I mean, it's just a camera, but just because it gets things done. It's like a workhorse. It just allows you to do what you need to do and there's no like barriers between that. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk about some gear. Let's geek out and spend money that we don't need to. No, I'm just kidding. This is definitely a worthwhile investment. But yeah, let's uh, get into uh, talking about this camera. The first thing I love about this camera is the insane autofocus. And what I love about the autofocus is that it just gives you peace of mind when you're shooting. Um, Cause I do a lot of weddings. I do a lot of family photo shoots. I do a lot of paid client work and just having an autofocus that is so solid like this one, it just makes my life so much easier. You can spray and you don't have to pray anymore. You can just spray and you know that 90% of those photos are gonna be tack sharp on the eye, even in low light situations. Um, it's not perfect. Sometimes it does hunt if there's like a lot of backlighting and stuff, but for the most part, the autofocus on this thing is amazing and it makes my life better. So that is the number one thing that I just love about this camera. The second thing I love about this camera is the multiple resolutions that you can use when shooting photos. So obviously it's a 61 megapixel camera, but I only use the 61 megapixels like 10% of the time or maybe less than that. And it's cool, it's a cool option to have, especially if you have like a 12.9 inch iPad with the OLED display, you can really crop into those photos and see all the detail and all of its glory. Very high definition experience. So having 61 megapixels is dope. Uh, but I'm not gonna use that 90% of the time because you're just gonna eat up your hard drives like crazy. In fact, I did a photo shoot on accident, shot everything uncompressed, raw, and I was just kicking myself in the balls because my thing was filling up so fast. It was like 500 gigabytes for like a little photo shoot. So not cool. But there's three different settings for uh, how much resolution you want. There's a large, which is like 60. There's a medium, which is 26. And there's a small, which is 16. So you can really just tailor it to how much resolution you need. I have it actually set on the dials. So I can you know, switch the dial to determine what resolution I want, which is great. Because if I'm like, oh, these pictures, I need a lot of resolution for cropping or whatever, switch it to high res mode. Boom, I got high res photos. If I'm doing like a really burn and turn photo shoot, I'll just shoot it in 26 or 16. Uh, another thing I really love about this camera is the color rendition. Um, I remember when I first got the A7S3, when I used to shoot everything on an A7 III, I noticed that the newer Sony cameras have such good color and skin tones and contrast. And this camera is no different. It has the probably the best contrast and colors that I've seen out of a Sony camera. And that's awesome, because Sony is hit and miss with colors, but until now. So now the skin tones look good, the just the, the dynamic range is amazing. It's, it's just such a crisp, clear image that I love it. Um, I guess the only downside of that is this thing is so sharp, so crisp, that it can come off as a clinical like photo, it's very surgical almost. It's just like perfect. Um, and right now there's a big trend where a lot of photographers are wanting to do film photography and they also want like more film-like cameras like the Fuji X uh, V100 because they kind of give your photos a little more soul, you know, like with film cameras and stuff. But I find that if I just want to attach like a vintage lens to this thing and you do a little Lightroom magic, you can get like vintage looking photos. Um, and also I'm not really into the hype of film right now and of like uh, overpriced like film like digital cameras because I feel like you can just get like a cheaper mirrorless any cheaper camera and just do a preset in Lightroom and you can really make it look uh, however you want. So yeah, that's one thing that is amazing about this camera but also could be a downside depending on who you are. The next thing I really love about this camera is just the clarity of the LCD screen and the viewfinder. I don't know the uh, specs, how many dots or whatever. All I know is it's really nice to look at. <laughs> I know like looking at my A7S3 because I shoot with both of them for weddings. Uh, 
I just like, I prefer staring at this LCD and this viewfinder more. It's just so bright and amazing, especially like I shoot everything outside midday in the rain. So just having that bright, nice, crisp LCD is amazing. So just, it's just, it's just a good tool to use. Like it's just a tool that works. Like the screen is nice and bright. The EVS is like super HD. So you can get the shots that you need. So the clarity, that's one thing I really like about it. So let's talk about the things I don't like about this camera. And it's kind of a silly, it's a very stupid thing that I don't like about this camera, but I originally purchased this to do video work. Uh, with the IBIS and all the specs, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be perfect for wedding videography. I could shoot everything handheld, you know, just like with a strap, ditch the monopod, handheld, 24 to 70, boom. Um, but I found that using it for a couple months that I actually prefer the A7S III's video way more than this. Um, I, don't, I couldn't put my finger on it, but the video that comes out of this is good, but it's not great. There's something off about it. It's a little more grainy. It's a little less contrasty and sharp. Um, the S-Log doesn't grade as well. I mean, it's very subtle. The average person's not gonna know, but as a professional, uh, yeah, I just learned that this is just a better photo camera. It's not the best like video camera. So that's the only thing I was bummed out about. Um, but at the same time, that's kind of a stupid reason to be bummed because it's obviously a photo camera. So, but for photography, it's insane. So whatever. All right, now the big question is, should you drop the ducats or the money and upgrade for this camera? And yes and no. So yes, if you are a like full-time photographer and you are making at least 5K a month from client photography work, then hell yeah, dude. Don't, don't stop, get this camera right now. It makes my life so much easier. It's the most reliable camera I've ever had. It's so crisp, it can do everything I need it to do. Um, it's very versatile. So if you need to put food on the table and you are a professional photographer, this is just another sword in your armory <laughs> or arrow in your quiver or something, right? So this is just a tool, this is a workhorse. This is the bread bringer. It brings home the bread, it gets the job done. So yes, if you are a professional and you're making money, this camera is a no brainer, especially for portrait photography, like weddings. Uh, yeah, this thing is amazing and I hope it never breaks. But if you're like just a creator and you're not making that much money uh, doing photography at this moment, um, I would not upgrade. It's not gonna make your content any better than an A7 III. Um, in fact, I have some photos I took on the A7 III which are some of my favorite photos. And so it just goes to show that yes, this is a beast workhorse awesome camera, but the camera doesn't necessarily make the good photo. It's all about, you know, composition, lighting, and subject. So remember that when you're buying cameras, it's like really, it can be procrastination just buying new cameras. So, but yeah, so if you're just a creator, just stick with what you got, maybe invest in some lenses instead. Um, and don't get this camera, pass on it until you start making enough money where it'll pay for itself in like two months. So yeah, that, that's it, guys. That is my review for portrait photography. Hope you liked the B-roll. Um, if you made it to the end of this video, please like and subscribe to support the channel. I do a lot of aesthetic vlogs in Hawaii and portrait photography and creative, creative content for creators. So yeah, hope you like that, guys. Go out and make something dope. Until next time, peace.